In gastroenterology, we use water-based lubricant gels for any procedure, really, where we're inserting anything into any orifice. The reason for, for that is just that it, it makes the procedure so much more comfortable for the patient and avoids the trauma that inserting things otherwise might cause. In the outpatient clinic, uh, digital rectal examinations, if we were performing proctoscopy or rigid sigmoidoscopy, we would always use gel on, on those devices and any endoscopic procedure undertaken in the endoscopy unit. Okay, so I'm just going to put the, uh, the lubricant on a piece of gauze here. That's a five gram tube. Um, and that's going to allow me to do the digital rectal examination. So just make sure that that firmly coats the, uh, the end of the finger. And sir, if I can just ask you to pull your, your knees up towards your chest a little bit. That's fantastic. Well done. In addition to patient comfort factors as a, as a reason for using the gel, um, if you don't use it, you can cause uh, local trauma to the the perianal area. So I'm just going to insert the finger just into the back end here so just make apply a little bit to the external orifice and then gently insert the, the finger and the reason that we do that is to make sure that there's not anything just inside like a tumour that we might traumatise if, uh, if we did the procedure without uh, doing that first. So with colonoscopy similarly for flexible sigmoidoscopy because we use the same equipment essentially um, what we would do would be to put five to ten grams of the water-based lubricant on a usually a piece of gauze um, and then apply it to the, the the end of the shaft of the scope over about the distal um, 10 to 15 centimeters avoiding getting any of it on the light source and the, all of the machinery at the bottom end or obscuring the the optical interface um, and make sure that it's evenly covered all around the, the scope before insertion. And we'll then now be able to insert that into the gentleman's anal canal and that means that it's just a bit more comfortable as it, as it goes through. Uh, what we'll now be doing is looking at, at the rectum and progressing up the colon. The additional fact that you've already performed a digital rectal examination and you've used probably about five grams of the lubricant to, to perform that. Um, so there's already a, a coating around the anal canal that should make insertion of the scope a bit easier. Very easy progress. He's been an absolutely brilliant patient. Um, and doing very well in terms of uh, being comfortable throughout the procedure. Sterility in terms of of the gel is absolutely paramount. We spend, you know, we're in a, in a unit where we've spent about a million pounds um, producing a, a decontamination plant uh, that means that all uh, endoscopes are disinfected and decontaminated to a, a very high level um, before they're inserted into the body. And of course that would all be ruined by using some dirty piece of gel to put on the outside of it before you you insert the tube. In the same way, single use is completely um, mandatory, really. You obviously appreciate that we're, we're sticking these tubes into bits of the human body, some of which are um, patently not sterile and, and can have faecal residue and, and in the stomach other types of, of residue as well. Um, and it would be utterly inappropriate to, to reuse any of that lubricant um, and completely contravene all of the standards of decontamination that are ingrained in the practice of, of, of gastroenterology and endos endoscopy in particular. I mean we use water-based products. From a patient perspective you don't tend to get a lot of residue and stickiness afterwards. This is something that you want to wipe away and feel as if you haven't got something stuck there after, after the procedure that makes you feel as if you might have soiled yourself or something like that. So patient comfort is also an issue. Mm -hmm. If you've got things that are wax or oil-based, they do tend to um, damage some of the equipment, but they can also lead to an increased perishability of some of the, the consumables. Um, so some of the rubber products don't get on particularly well with anything other than the, uh, the water-based lubricants, really.
One relatively new thing with the lubricant jelly is to put it on the end of the biopsy forceps, which allows it to go through the scope channel uh, a lot more easily. Um, and that's, we use that fairly standardly now. People often talk about lidocaine gels. Um, and in most circumstances, they're, they're not necessary. Um, the, the, they don't really reduce the pain to any attributable degree in terms of a standard procedure um, and aren't as good at actually offering the lubrication. So uh, you don't achieve what you really need. If, you, if you've got reasonable technique and you use the standard water-based gels, then um, that's, that, that's the, the right way to do things in the vast majority of cases.